This is the keyboard you have been looking for. Trust me when I say this, if you haven't convinced yourself already, by the end of this video you would have already bought one. The Epo Maker Fekker Galaxy 80 is a budget TKL gasket mounted keyboard with a full aluminium chassis and lots of dampening features inside. The Galaxy 80 cost me 162 New Zealand dollars from the Epo Maker website, fully built including keycaps and shipping. I've had this keyboard for nearly 3 months now and it is a very enjoyable experience. When I was searching around about 3 months ago as well for a keyboard that is TKL, there weren't actually that many options with the aluminium chassis and the gasket mount at an affordable price. This was one of the keyboards that popped up and I was really intrigued. That's the reason I bought it and I don't have any regrets so far. You can see the unboxing in the b-roll footage as the video is playing and as you can see, there's not too much to it, it just comes with a standard USB-C cable and not really too much else in the box. Let's head on to the features. In terms of features, it has a wireless 2.4GHz wireless dongle which pops out from a magnetic pocket from the top of the keyboard. The keyboard also features an on and off switch as well as a Windows or Mac switch. Standard USB-C is also available for a wired connection as well. Keep in mind, you can only use the wired or wireless modes one at a time. The lighting on this keyboard is pretty decent and is relatively bright even with solid keycaps. I think the shine through looks great on this keyboard. The RGB isn't underwhelming at all and it definitely does look pretty decent on this keyboard. In terms of software, the controller is through the VTER software with fully individual addressable RGB for each switch if you would like and a few lighting modes to choose from as well. There are macros available and customizable key functions, so changing the F1 key to another key for example is possible. My only gripe with this software is that there is one LED strip below the delete key and unfortunately is not addressable. The RGB LED cannot be changed here. Overall, not a bad piece of software and it's pretty intuitive as well. Heading over to the looks of this keyboard. In terms of looks, this keyboard is a little bit basic, but that's just how I like my keyboards. Just a standard aluminium top chassis and in the black it looks really good as a whole. The bottom has a nice curve in adding to the look of the keyboard from the side. It has curved corners which I personally prefer and has a beveled edge on the outside. There is also the badge at the bottom of the keyboard which looks quite nice. Overall, I personally like the look and function of this chassis. Now for the build quality. The teardown of this keyboard is pretty simple. For this price category of keyboard, there is pretty good value for money in what it offers inside. There are double shot PBT keycap. The switches are a linear Fekker marble white and an aluminium top housing and bottom housing. This keyboard's plate is polycarbonate. Below that you have a pour on pad. On the sides of the keyboard there are the gasket mounts. Then you have some IXPE. Below that you have a PET pad and then the PCB. This PCB has south facing bridges. The PCB is also hot swappable. After that there is a EDPM seat pad and lastly a PET pad finishing off the aluminium bottom chassis. As you can see in the bottom housing there is a large cavity for where the battery sits and the actual controller and on the right there are a few cutouts in the aluminium there. There has been a lot of thought that has gone into this keyboard for its price category and the stock keyboard does sound and feel pretty good. 
For the keycaps, they are double shot PBT and they feel great to type on. Not too much wobble on these keycaps and they give the Fekker Marble Whites a nice sound. The Legends are quite modern and large. They are pretty similar to the keycaps I was going to get, but I ended up just sticking with these for now. The keycaps are a little smooth on the tops for now, with a bit of usage over the three months and I would have preferred them to stay with a little bit of texture for longer, but I guess that's okay for me. In terms of switches and stabilizers, these marble whites from Fekker do sound pretty good and feel amazing to type on. They are a linear switch, and coming from Kale Box Shades, I really enjoy these switches, despite usually preferring really clicky switches. They have an actuation force of about 42 grams and a bottom out force of 47 grams, so they aren't really that heavy compared to what I'm personally used to. These stabilizers are plate mounted and they sound and feel great to type on, with a bit of thock which is really pleasant. I haven't noticed any rattling with these stabilizers either so I think they're doing pretty well for the moment. They are also factory lube, and if you wanted to, you could tune them up a little bit yourself. In terms of modding this keyboard, you definitely could do it. Just keep in mind there's not actually that much space in the keyboard. I mean, you can take some of the noise dampening out, or you can take some of the pads out. You could add a tape mod if you really wanted to. But I think the keyboard sounds really good stock, and there's not really many issues with it, in my opinion. So you definitely can and have the ability to. And just keep in mind that if you're going to add add anything, it's going to be a little bit tough to close it, but this keyboard was really easy to open and work with, so I mean, you wouldn't really have any problems there. Just some quick notes on the metal chassis, it feels amazing when you touch it. It's extremely heavy and there is no wobble on the chassis at all. It is fully made of aluminium, the top and bottom plates, which is a very good feature at this price range. I mentioned on the features of this keyboard that this chassis looks pretty basic, and it is, but it does suit a minimalist style and has pretty much no extras on the top in terms of design, except for the pull-away star which houses the wireless connector or the little RGB strip that I haven't been able to change the color of. In terms of the feel of the keyboard, it's quite premium, with the amount of dampening that comes with the keyboard and the pretty decent stock stabilizers. The sound and feeling of this keyboard is pretty amazing. I've been typing on it for nearly 3 months now. Now for the sound test.
overall, this is probably one of the best keyboards you could buy for under 160 New Zealand dollars. That is a TKL with a gasket mount with a solid aluminum chassis. It is really nice and I don't really have any gripes about it at all. Genuinely, it is a good buy if you're looking into this category of keyboard of TKL on a budget with all the features that you want. Now that about sums up this video, thank you guys very much for watching. Check out ystech.org for some more awesome content. But other than that, I hope you enjoy the video. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!